hopefully uh if y'all can see this somebody comment telling me they can see a little bit of the screen all right see it. yeah you're good i'm gonna get into some some old plays that we've kind of run and um if there's anything you want to i got some stuff in my dropbox open too um Okay. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with this play here, which is my uh favorite. Okay, go with that. RPO. Um this drawing is real bad. <laughs> but on this guys, what we have is we have the seam and the fin to both sides of the ball. It's a inside zone RPO where we're gonna lock the six backer. So I'm just showing I'll talk more when I get it on screen, but it's a seam fin RPO to uh both sides. So here if I, I draw this up and get it started a little bit. So both sides have the seam, both of them have the fin. The, this is our pre-snap side. The field side is our pre-snap side. Tyler, the way that we throw the pre-snap side is if the quarterback gets pressure now. So if he isn't getting any pressure as in a blitz right now, there's no reason for him to go here pre-snap. They have three over two, not a good look. Post-snap, we're going to read our six backer, which in this case is this inside backer. We have the seam route, and then we have the five yard in, the fin, once he's able to read the collision of the seam route after the play. So we start the play here. Um, on this one, if I was him, and we tell him to hand the ball off unless – that my that that linebacker feels now. Um, on this one, you know, I don't, I didn't bother him on what he decided to do. He decides to hand it off on the zone, and our running back finds is able to find the hole. Hopefully, we got another view uh, of the play coming. And if you guys got any questions about the play, uh, stop me as we're running it. Let me see if I, we got a. Hopefully, we got a second there, a second view. I don't know if I put that. Yeah, because it's got sound. So he's making that decision. There's no pre-snap pressure, as you can see. You can't even see that uh, wheel linebacker on the on the screen, so we're not worried about him. He's not in the pressure, so we're going to go post-snap. He feels as though this linebacker is not filling the hole, so then we run our zone. And this play has probably been our most successful RPO over the last few years. I don't do as much 10 personnel as I used to, but uh, this one is good. You can do it with 11 personnel too. If you can just put a tight end backside to the field, you can either kill that or run it as well. So similar defense here. This is uh, one of the teams we play there, our rivals. We got a six uh, – we have six in the box. They actually have three guys to the boundary. So on, in this case, there is no field pressure pre-snap. So he's going to run the RPO read. This one can be a little trickier with the three guys in the boundary. On this, um, number four decides to one, run a one-step hitch. No, my quarterback has freedom, so my quarterback probably checked to that one-step hitch. There was no need to have been fine at the five yards, but he hands it off to our running back. Running back was, was you know, a little bit better than their guys. It should have been a four-yard game. Very rarely do we get uh, negative plays uh, with this um, RPO, and you'll see it again here. So he's reading that six stack back in this case. As you can see here, zone. He should be pulling it, but he hands it off. I mean, it should have been a, a minimal game. Nope. We just had a, a better guy at running back. Welcome, coaches, for coming in. Right now we're talking some uh, 
Besides on RPOs, you got any questions, please um, let me know. See if I can find another clip here in our huddle. All right. Let me do the sign off. All right, on this one again, as I said, you know, we this should be called stripper to the boundary. We're in the middle of the field here, which is fine. The backside is always pre-snap. Do we have backside pressure? Do we don't? This team here is a stacked team. They slide it to bear. They did a lot of zero. They were big on just trying to blitz and confuse us. So um, here we go on this. This time he reads it again. He feels this backer is not filling the hole. And he hands it off and then the running back is able to, to find his own hole. Try to see if I can find clips of us passing the read because we did do that. This is his pre-snap read. This is his post-snap read. He feels as though he isn't filling the, the hole. Zone blocking is a being man on man because they slid to the bare front on that and then we're able to get a game. See if I can um see if I can find some clips of us uh actually uh, Coaches, which screen are you seeing? Are you still seeing? Are you seeing um, my Dropbox screen? Or are you seeing another film? You still seeing Huddle? Dropbox. You see the Dropbox? Okay. Yeah. So these are some clips okay. from uh, this year. Let me get back to it. Screen from this year. Okay. So on this one again. It's a pretty simple read on the RPO. I'll try to see if I can find one with the tight end too. As you can see, um, we always ask ourselves pre-snap field pressure. I think we've maybe thrown field pressure maybe once um, a year. It's, it really don't get field pressure to this surprisingly. This is a, we like it a lot on third and five because we expect field pressure don't always get it. As you can see here, he rides maybe a little too long. He doesn't feel like this backer is filling. So, off. And then we're able to get uh, positive yards. Let's see if we can go back. That was two. Okay, I can just run forward. Open up this clip. Da, 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 da. This is one in the red zone. I'm sure he's going to throw this one in the red zone, of course. This is all with All right, here you go. We got the tight end. If you have 11 personnel, all you do is he's D-gap protected. So now instead of worrying about six guys, you can take up the seven. You want to know is there an eighth guy blitzing? So in this one, we got the seam. We got the five yard in with the fin, the same fin. We have the fin on the backside. You can always tag it, but we like to keep the fin um, unless it's press coverage. If he's not getting, if he's not getting a, a extra blister or an eighth guy, he doesn't worry about it. The tight end makes it dead. Now, depending on what kind of tight end you got, if you got a kid that you want to go down, fill on the seam, let him go. If you got one, you want to leave a block. It depends on what you got that year on your team. And so on this, they were pretty much in man coverage. Our tight end is gone here in the red zone. Quarterback hits the scene. Let me run it back so you can see it full speed. So here's that guy in the scene. Um, we weren't a very good football team this year, but this is once again one of the plays that we ran well. Trying, trying to find a time where we do it. Um, this was off of Audible. The quarterback checked it to the wrong side. And again, this is a give. So as you can see, we like it to the boundary. 
Um, we're able to get yards on this one, but that was not the way the play was supposed to go. It was supposed to be ran to the boundary. Trying to see if I can find one more clip for you here of a pass of it. And then, you know, any questions? Here we go again to the boundary. This time he pulls it. As you can see, this team is rolled three. This corner is taking the seam. He should hit this five yard in underneath. And he waited real late to throw it to him. But even still, um, this is a huge uh, play for us as far as what we do. Um, anybody got any questions or anything about this RPO? Anybody do anything similar? Um, about we call it we whatever name you want to get it, we call it the shark last year. That it's our same fin RPO and it's probably the best one we do from 10 personnel. Anybody got anything? We good. Anybody got um any questions? Any questions, anything anybody want to see in particular? Terrence, do you find that the guys, that your quarterbacks get pretty good at uh, pre-snap reading even the read side? Yeah, I think so. What you have to do is um, – I don't want to do that. I don't see. know. Did, did that make sense? It does. I think what has to happen is what you – what we do is you have to be able to communicate to them um, when you're teaching it to them. Sure. How you're going to uh, share it. Um, so, for example, if you've got whatever your pre side is, so I'm going, to, I'm going to go here to the pre snap side, and it, it it involves with everything. And so, let's just say our pre snap side has a H back, and you know we can start off with a single receiver because that's kind of America's way of doing it out of uh, 20 and 11 personnel. We always tell this guy, do so we tell him right now, if we're going to run, let me finish trying to draw something up here. If we're going to run inside zone, so say we got inside zone to the right, and we're running inside zone kick, so the H back is coming back to this side. And so he's here, running back is on this side. So what he has to understand is his pre-snap side is here because that's the side that his back is going to be to. You cannot read an RPO if your back is turned to it. So what we tell him on the five-yard out is this. You're only going to throw this if you get pressure. We want to run the ball. So as long as the team gives us six in the box, then we'll hand the ball off all night. We're not, we don't want you to throw the ball. That's the hardest kind of concept for them to get. Um, Absolutely. We, we do not want to throw the ball. And so we hammer that on them. We look at film and we constitute what means throw it. So let's say we got a three stack team here. If this rover is sitting out here in no man's land, who cares? Run the ball. It's six on six. The only way that you're going to throw this pre snap is if this rover attaches himself to the box in some kind of way. So right now we got to fire it off because the corner's off seven yards. If he's, if he's pressed, you can change something else. But we hammered this discussion on pre-snap. What makes you throw the ball? His answer has to be the rover or the, un, the, the open gap has to have a, somebody attached to it. So if the rover has not attached itself to the D gap in this instant, then we're not worried about it. He has to become the sub guy in the box. Likewise, what we tell him, if this was 20 personnel, what would make us throw this post-snap? Well, post-snap has to be the same thing. Post-snap, I'm going to run the ball unless somebody attaches himself to the box. Um, that always has to be his answer. As long as we have um, six guys in the box, or if we're reading the six guy that's different, as long as he doesn't attach to the run play, we're going to stay, we're going to stay with it. So I'm going to try to go back here. Um, I'm going to try to go back here to my, my drop box here so you can kind of see a, a, a better example. They don't always do it right. It's something that has to be worked. We had to uh, change quarterbacks mid-year 
Um, and so that was a problem for us. This is probably my, my favorite thing. I got in the 12 P, um, a lot. And so this is, you talk about this, how the quarterback screws it up. So on this, his D gaps are dead, right? Because you're not having to worry about D gap, um, defenders. So now instead of saying, since we got seven guys on the line of scrimmage, we're looking at eight guys. So the box has to be filled. Well, if you look at it here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pre-snap, this guy has the five yard out. Post-snap, this guy has a post. We end up throwing the post for a touchdown. This was our all-region receiver. He should have threw the fire it out and the fire it out because they've got eight guys in the box. So this is a situation where we want him to throw the ball pre-snap. We gave him a, a better look and he doesn't do it. He gets lucky on the touchdown, which post-snap was the right read because it's eight guys in the box, but not really what we want. So I'm gonna show it. I'm gonna show it a couple of times. I want you just to watch this guy first on, on the first time through. He has the five yard out. There goes the eighth guy attached to the box. He should just catch it and throw it to that guy. I want you to watch him. As you see now, this out is wide open. That is where the quarterback should be. He should be throwing this out. That corner is in turn phase. He should let him catch it and run. That's easy yards. Eight guy was attached to the box. He decides to go through the RPO read, which becomes this guy. So theoretically, he's right. They know this our all region receiver. They're double teaming. And so we held the ball longer than we should have. That guy just makes a beautiful adjustment. Was not the right read, you know. So you have to teach the quarterbacks a lot. And it's a lot just going through that pitcher in the preseason. Show a play, even if it's not an RPO, and say, tell me about pre-snap. Tell me about post-snap. So I'll use this to teach my quarterbacks next year. What should happen here pre-snap? Well, we should throw the pre-snap fire out. Why? because our D-gap defender, outside D-gap defender is attached to the box. Cool. And then as you saw, that guy's wide open. Post snap decision, right read, he's been double teamed, we get blessed. That doesn't always happen. That's not what we wanted him to do. I want him to throw this five yard out and us go on about our business. You, you take him through a checklist, like, because if I'm, if, I, if you're going, can you go back to that other one for just one second? No problem, no problem. So, like, right there, if you paused it, like, what we're telling our guys is that's a post-defense in the secondary. So, to, that guy's taking away the post in the middle of the field, and I got eight guys in the box. I ought to be throwing the five-yard out is what I was getting at. Like, I mean, you, you got – Six on, or you got sorry, you got seven on eight and in the box, and you got a post def, post defense coverage. You ought to be throwing five yard out. Is what that's kind of what I was getting at. Like, what what process do you the quarterbacks gotcha. through? Um, so what I always do is we always go through the coverage, and this one he would tell us is a version of three. I would say, how would you know? He would say, looking at the hard deck, they got three defenders. Everybody's is below. Right. They cool. All right. So what's your preach that process? Um, I got a tight end, so where am I protected at? I say, okay, tell me about pre-snap. I have somebody attached pre-snap. So I don't even get to the post-snap part of them with it. Um, it is a post-snap safety. I don't even want him to get that far. I want him to understand he has a D-gap defender, it's eight in the box, it's pre-snap throw. And so what I try to do is I try to not talk about the post-snap action unless it's a possibility because that fixes his mind that the post-snap world doesn't exist. So I, I think the way you're saying it is correct. I just don't talk about the post-snap world. If he tells me pre-snap, he can take the five yard out. Because I'm trying to get his mind to think, I don't even want to think about looking over there at the post-snap option because it's not sure. realistic. Sure. No, I'm with you. So yeah, this was our, uh, like I said, this kid came in for us probably about game five. Game, yeah, he came in probably about game four. This kid, number one, who in, he was our athlete. We played him at quarterback, and we played him at wide receiver. He got hurt for two games. And so when this guy, when he came back, we just moved him to receiver, and this guy took over full-time at quarterback. He was splitting it with somebody else. So um, that's what we try to walk him through. That's not always um, the case. This kid got better. That was towards the 
that was one of the reasons that he missed, but that was like game um that was game nine. And that was the team that finished second in our region. And you know, he for the most part of the night, we scored we scored more points on that team than any other team in the region did. We just couldn't stop him. <laughs> so um this was a little earlier, some that he that he uh missed. So like on this one, he misses, you talk about missing the read altogether. Um this team, this should be a run because it's seven on seven. Um, and I'm not sure he did. He did he, well, he did it right. He did it right this time. It was seven on seven, and he ran the ball. Like you said, we didn't get much. I think we got four yards, but that's how, that's what I'm trying to get my quarterback. Oh, you're trying to get, yeah. Yep. And so um, I became that's, – That's the hardest thing for us to get those guys to understand. If we get four yards, we are very, very happy. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Um, I think I think they get concerned with it's it's got to be a touchdown every time because they see all these high powered offenses on TV and all and yes and I mean same thing here like you said this here is third down I know it's third down it should still be a run and of course yes. because it's third down he decides nope I'm not gonna run it I'm gonna throw it <laughs> and you know as you know this kid plays for the pass interference so if we get. We get blessed with that, but it's still, like I said, what's the, what's the read? The read is they stayed too high the majority of the night because they didn't want us throwing the ball to any of our receivers. Um, this team, you know, had – these. this team got two defensive ends that will be playing on Saturdays on TV. And so they try to keep everything in front of them, which I would too if I had two defensive ends that will be playing on Saturday. I mean, both kids were about 6'4", 260. But, you know, that's not the right read. It's, it's seven guys. We can block seven. And he's already thinking about um, running the pass. Before I get into some, some gap, because I know we want somebody wanting to talk gap, I will show you guys this. Um, I'm, I'm a big person on possession and 10 because of analytics. And um, what I discovered was if you get four more yards, the FZ, at the FBS level, first I'll tell you that, at the FBS level, if you get four more yards on first down, those teams scored on those those teams scored on sixty percent of their drives. They got four more on possession team on team. Yep. And they didn't. They scored. I think it was thirty nine percent. So you see the percentage difference. For us, it wasn't as big this year. Um, we scored probably on. I think it was thirty. Excuse me. I'm not gonna say score. We could not hit field goals. We got inside the red zone. 43% of the time that we got four plus yards on first down. When we didn't, we got inside the red zone 17%. Probably the best drive starter that was reliable for us, um, and I got a few clips in here, was this play. We call it Rome, and all it is is the outside zone. It's the jet sweep toss pass, and we pretty much ran it to the boundary. Um, you'll see it here, and we didn't have a big play guy. But we were always able, it seems, to get about six or seven yards. And it's that simple. Um, teams don't, as you know, don't put anybody into the boundary. Um, there's one place that defenses don't, they like to keep the field overloaded. We crack with the uh, X outside receiver and then our H back and our running back lead. And so, and, you know, receivers love it. Passing yards, quarterback love it, passing yards. And then as you can see here, first down, that kid got nine yards before he got knocked out of bounds. So it was a very reliable uh, drive starter for us. We ran it to our sideline. So wherever our sideline was, um, we came out, took a shot here. Then on second and 10, we needed to get some more yards. And guess what we called? You know, we just didn't have that guy. I think if you got a kid that's that guy, they can get more than the six or seven yards that we were getting. But I think, you know, that's, you know, important as well. So I think this is one here where we didn't call it to the boundary, but it was a good play against this defense only because, like I said, their corners were out and we needed help against those defensive ends. He fumbled it, he got it back, but he got 10 plus yards. So I know that's not necessarily what we want to talk about but since we were in here. I wanted to discuss if you guys are looking for a good um, possession in 10 
nice, easy play. I don't know if you guys are running anything like that, but that play was real good for us. And I think, um, let me see, let me see, let see, let see, let see. Trying to see if I can, um, I should have clips of this. This is our bash read off of, um, our bash run off of GT. Um, I think that uh, somebody said something about counter schemes when, you know, what could you guys do to that? I got some kind of RPO. I got a kind of RPO in if anybody wants to go there. But I, I know we talked about some, some gap scheme. This here is a we ran, um, we do a lot of 20 personnel because we didn't, everybody doesn't always have ace backs. So we had two good running backs at my last stop. You know, both of these guys ran for over a thousand yards. So we like to have them on the field together. Um, and so we're going to run that outside zone stretch to the boundary. Should have ran it to the field and we ran counter back to the field. And the quarterback should have handed the ball off. He kept it, but the the counter GT, the bash play was a real good uh, read for us. Um, I might be able to find some more clips too. Um, yeah, this is a close up. Again, that same team with the stack and the overhang. And so to me, he's standing still. He should be handing off the outside zone and let that guy beat it. If you can see our receivers are breaking down to block, their corner's not even in the picture. This running back should have this linebacker and we should be good to go. Luckily, we are able to find our way. He kicks him out and then the quarterback gets a nice, nice game. He goes, he is this was uh probably earlier in the game that we ran it against them same same year. I like I like the counter going to the boundary more. That's me. Um I think because you usually get numbers there. So again, here we go. Quarterback pulls it. This time he should have pulled it and he got a nice alley. It would be better if those prima donnas out there blocked the corners, but I'm sure you guys are like me where that isn't always the case. <laughs> those are the guys I coach. Yeah, me too. That's how I made my living. And that guy over there is playing, is started as a freshman at Akron. And it's a yeah. good blocker, but doesn't like, didn't like getting dirty on this one. Quarterback disconnects perfect. And <laughs> so been there yes yep and I think I got another version of it as well to... that same team I told you about that was a stack team a bear team tried to do a little everything did a lot of blitzing um, we go to it here we got a kid that um we put a kid in the backfield. We really, I think we wanted him to hand the ball off. Kid in the backfield run, runs a legitimate 4-4. He's running track at Georgia right now in the 400. He runs a 45-2 in the 400. We're like, mm -hmm. please just give him the ball. Gotta love quarterbacks. <laughs> As you can see, he did not give him the ball. And so you probably can see the little short man, me over there, like having a hissy fit because he kept the ball on the read instead of giving it to the guy that is faster than everybody on the field. So I chose the quarterback, so I would have to be mad at myself on this one. Any uh any other questions? I can get to some uh, counter GH. Any quick? Well, let me see if I can find this play for another view. My friend, I'm a, good to have friends. So you got a, a couple of different huddle accounts to get in here to show the show fam. Um, one of my one of my young friends who 
um, worked underneath me before he became a OC. They ran it too. He ran it with an H back. And so I should be able to find his clips. He didn't run it nearly enough as I told him he should have, but he did have some success with it. Um, so he probably should have ran it more than what he than what he did. Let me see if I can find some of his clips. So here it is. He's in a little unbalanced look with the H. He's running it to the field, and he hands, he's able to hand it off. I don't know if he has a tight copy. I let it run again. I don't know if he, I don't think he had a tight copy. Go back to it. Young old line guy who uh, coached under me. Now he's an OC with a friend of mine who we were OC and DC with together about a few years ago. And so he, his quarterback says the end is not taking the running back and he hands it off. So if you're not using back schemes, they can be uh, beneficial. Another one here that he uses. Let's see what happens. Oh, the quarterback should have pulled it. Did he pull it? Yep, he did. And he's able to get five yards. I'm saying all these positive clips in here, and I told him he didn't run enough. But again, that time he got blitz, the quarterback still got some positive yards out of it. So if you're doing some bash, hey, there we go. And this team, they're playing, they're playing a team that made the final four. I don't know if you guys are, I know Owens is in Georgia. I had to do that at, at the school I was at. We had to play some teams that were better than us. Um I do got some pin and pull coach shorts. So I'll see if I can find that too um, in here. I saw that in the chat that you want some uh, pin and pull. I ran Bucks Week. I had to see if I can find some of those Bucks Week uh, clips. That might be a little harder. Um, so we had some questions, guys. I'm a, if somebody else can answer them. Um, Bucks Week, we talked about Bucks Week. Coach Scott, guys, if you got your email, I'll I send it to Coach Scott. You can put it in the chat. If you didn't already, he's got some blocking progressions for his wide receivers. If you guys um, don't see that in the chat, please do. I'm always up for blocking progressions for wide receivers. So um, let me see if I can go back here, Coach, to find my um, pin and pull Bucks sweep stuff. Did I categorize this stuff is the question. Mm. I thought I did. Hey, you know what though? Nope, nope, nope. That's not it either. I've got some Bucks Week clips, coach. If you hadn't asked for it, I could have pulled it right up. Let me see if I can, uh, boy, that might be too hard. Let's see if I can find uh, one from this year. So we used to be, uh, cause we used to, I used to be a lot of pin and pull when I was 10 personnel. One year um, when my offensive line coach left me, I ended up going at an offensive line coach who was a friend of mine. He, he had come from the wing T system. So then we became uh, more of a Bucks Week team because he could teach it easier. And because you're asking for it, Coach, I cannot find uh, any uh, pin and pull. I can do this, though. Let me do this. Let me do this, guys. Let me do this. We'll go to my blog. I can find some pin. I know, where, I know how to get to that 10 personnel pin and pull. I got it on here. Just give me a second. Hmm. Yo, put my name in. Maybe that help. Help it come up. Hey, there we go. I know I can find something for you, Coach, here. 
And so, um, I don't know where this starts. This is some old 10P, that's it. RPO stuff that we did. Um, it was a compliment to our power read. I love power read, I love counter read. If you got a quarterback that can move, if not, then put a, you know, just run your regular RPOs. And so the pin and pull for us was this. And this doesn't, let me show it here before I get there. Let me, let me, um, let me show this to you on the whiteboard. So let me erase all this, guys. I don't know, just give me a new one. Can I just get a new one? Can I just get a new one? So here's what I'm gonna do, Coach. So here's how we ran the old, that pin and pull. Sharks, if you're an end zone guy, Norm was only called it Giants. Because that's who taught it to me. Um, but if we, but how we ran that draw, how we ran it was this. And this pin and pull is still effective. Back then I had uh, four, the, the school I was previous head coach at before I left, I kept a stock of receivers. So that was totally different. So what we would do is this, teams, that like to put the three technique away from the back. That's who we want, that's how we want to run it. The teams like to put the three technique away from the back. Let's say we're in three by one. So I'm gonna draw the blocking scheme and then you'll kind of see the plays that kind of help you. So three by one is to the field. So three by one is over here, right? Three by one is over here. What we would do with this, they put the three, the three technique away from the running back, we would call this pin and pull. These guys are, are pretty much, I'm sorry. They, those guys are pretty much gonna block out or try to reach. We're gonna get a double team here. We're gonna fold this guy and we're gonna block back. He runs it like stretch and then he has the option to cut it up or if they reach him to get around it. Likewise, if they put the three technique to the back, if they put the three technique to the back, this was actually uh, easier, but I like calling it when the three technique was away from the back to get the three technique. I like running zone. I like running um, zone with the three technique right here. Because to me, it helps with double teams for the, for the guys. And I like double teams on zone. I like, I like it like old school veer blocking. Everybody's not like me though. So if we get the three technique to the back, they would just kick out, he would block the nose, and he would fold. And then again, we're running stretch read again, he would be a little over, over here. He's gonna stretch and he's gonna read that tackle's block. Hook him or kick him out, then he'll cut up. So that's pretty much how we ran Shark and, um, Shark and Giants. So if you see it here, um, we didn't really pull the center, but you know, that's for drawing purposes. This was our pop pass. So this is exactly right. That, that's our pop pass to the Y, how we're gonna run it. If we got three man front, we're gonna pull both guards. One is a kick out, and then one is uh, skip pulling in the hole to replace. And so this was my first one as a head coach. We beat the number one team in the state. This was the equivalent to App State versus uh, Michigan because they paid us $15,000 for this game. The come down that we were supposed to lose. Um, I beat him this time. He paid us $15,000 every other year and I never beat him again, guys. Got close twice. But I think this, this year we caught him slipping. And so um, quarterback is reading this guy. He doesn't fill the hole. He hands the ball off. We get a hook. We get a block, and then that goes our running back down the sideline. So that's, you know, Sharks. Like I said, we have not ran it as much lately. All right, here we go. Go and see if I can pause it here. This is against a three-man front. So you'll see both guys pull. Quarterback is pulling the throw. There goes our wide on the pop pass. Run it again here against the three-man front. He should be handing the ball off. Yep. No, he's going to throw it again. Okay. All right. And as you see how, like I say, both guys pull. So if we got one high, 
if we got that post safety look, the Y is going to run straight up field and the A is going to run like a little slant route, angle route right off his butt. Basically a legal pick play. That's basically what it's supposed to be. And so um, this year, this, I was new this year. Like I said, it's like second game ever we ran this. So he's going to stack behind them. And as you can see, he came right off his tail. You can run it to the single receiver too if need be. So here goes another one. The quarterback's gonna be late with the, the throw. This team almost always played us in some type of zero or one coverage, trying to load the box and, and blitz our eyeballs out. He was late with the throw there, but as you saw, the guy was coming open. Here it is again. We called it to this, and this team, disguise coverage, they actually go back too high. Um, but it's still an okay play. Going to read that backer, especially if he walls off number three. He just vacated the whole scene, and there it was in the middle. And then, you know, love it. Like I said, when you got talent, um, and then they can find their way in the end zone. And so that was that. Um, trying to see if anything else in the chat. Um, John, I was using, if you, uh, if I gave you the thing, it has a little thing called the notes up here where it can show you, uh, when I share it, you share your screen. It just showed a whiteboard out of iPhone. You can um, share those things as well. Anybody got anything they want to add? Any questions about anything? Anything that you're doing that's good for everybody to do? I don't want to be the only one talking. I will gladly pass it off to someone. I'll take that as a no. Well, guys, if there's nothing else, I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably end this meeting. Um, might do another one of these next week. If you can, you know, tell me, you know, what you want to see, what you want to talk about, what you want to look at. I think that would be a uh, perfect. I'm just sharing, you know, some things that, you know, we do well. Um, I'm, I'm sure you guys do a lot of other stuff well as well. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for coming, man. Um, hit me up again. My, this is. Um, I don't know if I shared my. But if you got this message somehow, you either in one of the group chat with me or you found me on Twitter. So this was great, guys. I hope to hear and talk to you guys soon. Yeah. Thanks, Terrence. Good stuff.